Well, it seems to be following suit after a very active winter, unseasonably cold. We are now nearly into summer. We're still waiting for the 100s. I'm ABC 10 Chief Meteorologist Monica Woods right out of here at the state capitol in Sacramento. And we are tracking what has been an unbelievably mild start to our season. You can see our average first day of 100 degree heat typically comes by now beginning of June to right around June 13th throughout the Central Valley. But it hasn't happened yet for many of us. And we're tracking some of the reasons why. Our hottest temperature so far for downtown Sacramento, 96 degrees back on June 4th and again on May 13th. And you can see during the middle of May, right through the end of May, we were tracking some unseasonably warm weather. It seemed like we were on track to hit that 100 degree heat pretty soon thereafter. That's what happened last year on May 25th but it didn't come, hasn't come yet. And it doesn't look like we're going to see much of a warm up in store either for the short and long range forecast into almost the end of June. So it is very likely we will continue to add on to the days where we have below average highs. You can see overall, we are sitting about two to almost 10 degrees below average for our high temperatures across the state. There's just very few areas that have actually been above normal for about a six month period. Now there's a couple of reasons why. We're gonna take a look at the Pacific and we're in this cooler phase for parts of the Pacific Northwest right through about Baja, California. You can see the sea surface temperature anomalies are in the blues, so they're unseasonably cold, or unusually cold, I should say. And that stretches all the way back to nearly Hawaii where some of those weather systems have been originating and we've been getting mainly active weather for this year. Our low pressure systems have been moving in. We really haven't seen much progression from these high pressure ridges, which typically bring sinking, warming air. And it's a very stable pattern that we have over much of California during the months of June, July, August, even into parts of September. But instead, we've been able to pull in some of that moisture from the Pacific by these successive lows. It's kept the Sierra very active with showers and thunderstorms with some dangerous and even at times flooding conditions. But now we're starting to see that quiet down ever so slightly as high pressure is starting to build back in. It's just not going to last that long. Showers and thunderstorms here you can see have been progressively moving their way southward. And we're going to see a more stable environment, but we still have so much snow up in the Sierra, quite a bit of fog forming at this hour with the recent rain. But you can see the snowpack up at Alpine Meadows. There's some mothy areas, some green and rocky areas that's to be expected at this point in the year. But overall, abundant snowpack remains. The, these are just pictures from a couple of days ago, and you can see the feet of snow Along near where highway, uh, the Sonora passes, it has been a wild Sierra. You can see that the snowpack still looks like tunnels up there in the high country. But Caltrans finally got Sonora Pass open after being shut down for months because of a number of atmospheric rivers and historic snowpack in the Sierra. This all got started late in December, and that pipeline just didn't stop. We were tracking these deep into March and even April and May, more snow for this year. And I'll tell you, we've been tracking high level snow near Yosemite as well with these showers that have been coming in, driven by that colder than average uh, temperature pattern that's been developing throughout the state. Our snowpack with our snow water equivalent, so if we were to take all that snow, melt it down, how much water would we get out of it? Well, we're still over 200% of average for the Northern Sierra, the Central, nearly 350% of average, and the Southern Sierra is still over 500% of average. Now, what this means at this point in the season, it is really incumbent on water managers to deal with this peak snowpack melt because we're already past the point where we have our main precipitation coming in through February and in some parts of the Sierra through March. Now we're into that peak snow melt period, which is lasting into June. This is when water is at its highest demand. So there's this balancing act and a bit of tension because people want water, but we have to make sure that we keep a little bit of it and release some of it because of the snowpack that is yet to come. So we don't want to lose some of that precious water, but at the same time, we have to prepare for all that snow melt that has yet to melt down. We're losing about five to 10 inches over a three day period. And that is a little bit more aggressive than what we were seeing, say, back in March when we 
typically see the beginning of this phase. Instead, we were seeing that snowpack stay intact. But the cold and swift currents are coming from that snowmelt flooding. Never cross a flooded roadway, always wear a life jacket. But even at that, water officials are saying stay out of the water at this point because there's just way too much snow that's moving down the hill. It's all by gravity. The snow melts. It feeds many of our rivers that will eventually make its way down into our reservoirs and into the delta. So it's beautiful right now with all the high water and the water looks incredibly fresh and inviting, especially when we see just a bit of a bump up in temperatures. But at the same time, it's really, really cold because that snow melt coming down the hill and our air temperature hasn't been that warm. On the bonus side of things, of course, we're tracking our reservoirs and those have come up substantially. Shasta and Oroville nearly completely full. Oroville actually filling up for the first time in about a year and a half or so. Last year, it was dire straits. They couldn't even run the hydropower plants. So this year, a much different situation. Folsom also looking healthy at 94% full. And even for parts of the Central, uh, Central Valley, those numbers looking much better than, say, last year at this time. We're at about 80% full for New Malonis and Don Pedro and San Luis. Oh, that nearly looks to the brim. If you happen to pass by there, it's about 100% full. And then for Millerton and Pine Flat, those had been running really low, primarily just because water managers had to make sure that they had enough space for all that snow melt. Now they're starting to let just a little bit more water fill those reservoirs, not quite as much on the release side, but it's a balancing act always in California. Here's one of the waterfalls that is just absolutely spectacular. This is Yosemite Falls, thanks to, to the Yosemite Conservancy, who allows us to have that picture there. Yosemite, though, dealing with a couple of different factors here. We still have a lot of water running downhill. We're in the Central Sierra. You saw the snowpack numbers there, and there's a lot more snow that will be melting in the months to come. So Yosemite just saying there are some dangerous conditions near creeks and rivers near flood stage on the Merced River. Stay back from flowing water. We've been tracking this just to make sure that we let people know if Yosemite is closing some of the park or not. Right now, they're just saying stay away from any water. Stay away from bridges that look like they have a high water flow because that water is coming in fast and furious with the snow melt. This is also leading to some stream flows that are extremely high. This is a map across the state and where we see some of the highest. That's going to be the black dots, the blue dots. Uh, those are going to indicate some of the highest percentiles that we have. We've been unfortunately on the flip side of things, tracking a lot of deaths in our rivers even though we put out the word to stay away from the rivers, and this is partially the reason why. It just isn't likely at this point in the season that we have these incredibly high flows, but this is an anomaly year with historic snowpack in some areas. So the American River is one of the regions that people really like to recreate. Even hikers have been slipping in just because of not paying attention. There's a slippery area and getting quickly swept with the river. So you can see these triangles here on the bottom those are the median flows. This is where we are right now, and it's still running well above average. Again, water managers just have to let some of that water out from the upstream reservoir, that being Folsom, to make room for some of the snow melts coming in. So those waterways are going to be very high, fast, and cold. The water temperature is anywhere from about 55 to almost 70 degrees. Now, below Folsom, that's going to be a little closer to the snowpack, whereas the San Joaquin River at Stockton, a little farther from the snowpack, so it has time to warm up. Places that are uh, in parts of the Central Valley, like the Tuolumne River near Modesto, 56 degrees, that is actually colder than the Lake Tahoe water temperature, which is at 58 degrees. Some of those rivers near the foothills and the Sierra are at about 46 to 55 degrees. Those temperatures are cold enough to lose not only your breathing, but muscle control. So even the best swimmers really are having a tough time navigating some of these waters, again, because of the cold temperature, as well as the swift water that's coming uh, through those rivers. If you're looking for a change in our weather pattern, it's really not going to take hold at least for the time being, because all the way through June 20th through the 24th, we're going to be very likely across the west on the cooler side and wetter, especially through the Pacific Northwest through extreme northern California. 
Southern California drying out just a little bit. We've been hit hard with some of those rain showers coming in off the coast. So highs for tomorrow in the 70s for this year. If you're getting those weekend plans in early to take dad up possibly for Father's Day to the Tahoe Basin. 80s to near 90 for the foothills. And it is beautiful to do some hiking and look at some of those waterfalls right now. Just be aware the biggest dangers still remain with some of those rivers, creeks, streams flowing from time to time pretty high, fast and cold. 60s along the coast, we've got 80s inland for the valley. Our warmest day of the week for many of us will hit on Thursday and for some linger into Friday. Our mountain conditions will be drying out and that will take us through the weekend, but also cooling off. And you'll see that breezy along the coast as well on Sunday if you are doing some Father's Day activities there on Sunday near the coast for the Bay Area. 10-day forecast, we're going to cool things off once again next week, so it's a brief little bump up on Thursday and Friday, more snow melting, rivers a little higher, and then we'll start that cooling trend once again by the end of the weekend.